Yes. Okay, great. So, welcome to the Forest, ladies and gentlemen. Namaste. 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 Give you a bit of history how the blocks are working. So, this is how our story is beginning. About 350 years ago. These were the very, very first clocks they made here. Very simple for us today. Most of this is made of wood. Just stones for weights, no metal. Metal was too expensive. On the front, you just have an hour hand, no minutes. People weren't in such a rush like they are today. <laughs> Life is easier. And these kind of clocks then they made in the winter time. The farmers made them. It does get quite cold here because of the, the height we are. And sometimes if you're really unlucky, the snow could be all the way up to your waist. So you can't use the paths and the roads, so you just sit on the farm and wait. So you had the choice in those years then as a farmer over the winter, you either made clocks or you made babies. <laughs> <laughs> but not at the same time, please. Okay? <laughs> and then in the spring, when everything was all the paths were clear, you take your clocks down to your market, sell them off, and you had some extra money for your family. So that's the reason they made them. Spare time, lots of wood all around them. You're just going to turn that into something you can sell. Then, the clock making around 300 years gets more professional. They start making the metal uh, mechanical clocks that we recognize today. Still pretty simple, but it worked. And that goes into, again, a wooden box to secure everything together. And to cover up the wooden box, uh, a rectangle of wood. That goes onto the front, so everything is now hiding behind a big large base. And they do this on purpose, of course, because they're not just going to paint the, the letters here. They're going to use this big space, and they're going to paint all kinds of different designs, mm. different color schemes, just like us, we go shopping today uh, for whatever, for your house, for clothes. The more variety you have, the more chance you might buy something. Then about 250 years ago, that is when a clock maker takes one of the painted clocks and they add our new friend, and the, the star of the show, Yay! So that's how the first group of clocks were playing. Obviously how they work is very, very simple for us today because we have so much technology all around us. You do have to remember 250 years ago, this is the same as your computer is today or your mobile phone. This is the most advanced thing that you could buy and put in your home. But not just happy by putting a cuckoo inside, another clock maker wanted to tell everyone a very important story. So he made a very special clock to tell his story. And then he called his special clock the in-laws clock. <laughs> Do you have in-laws like this in India? The <laughs> They're everywhere. So he was a very happy man when it was one o'clock, you see. That was his lunch break. <laughs> and then eventually they also put not just a cuckoo and people moving, but they put music as well. So when that book is finished, the music starts. Little man here has a violin. So he's going to play a tune for his girlfriend. She's coming out of the window. The girlfriend is coming to Or maybe it's somebody else's girlfriend. <laughs> you don't ask these questions. So the cuckoo clocks that we recognize today, they started about 160 years ago because they thought, well, we, as well as painting clocks, you could just carve the decoration straight onto the wood. So the first clocks were quite simple. They based them on a simple house. And then as they became more popular with the public, different companies were adding more and more detail to make them different from the other companies. So eventually then you had animals and trees and birds and leaves, all the things that you might find in the forest itself. Obviously, this is a very special clock because of how, how big it is. Most of the clocks that they've been making over the last 150 years will just be around this size, just with very, very simple but classic carving that we recognize today. So the mechanical Google clocks, they come in two different kinds. And you can tell which is which by looking at the weights which hang on the chains underneath the clocks. So why the mechanical Google clock up? It's the weights going down that turns everything inside. And to wind it up, you take the chain opposite the weight and pull down the chain. So the weight goes back up to the very top. And when you hang a cuckoo clock up at home, because of the long chains, 
you need at least six feet between the bottom and the floor. Six feet. Six, about six feet, yeah. So where you see any clocks that have these size of weights here today, these are what we call one day clocks or daily winding clocks because here's our clock back on the wall, you wind it up to the top and now it takes 26 hours to go all the way down to the bottom. So you have to wind it up once a day to keep it working. And then the larger weights, these are like uh, grandfather clocks. These are what we call eight day clocks. Some people call them weekly winding clocks. Again, you wind everything up to the top, and now it takes eight days to go all the way down to the bottom. We also, ladies and gentlemen, have the battery cuckoo clocks. So now there's no more mechanical parts, it's just the battery quartz. And we also have weights, uh, they hang underneath, but they're just for decoration. So the mechanical ones are made of metal, the ones for batteries are just made of wood or plastic and they just hang there for show, they don't do anything. Mm. But because they're very light, uh, you can take them off for the ladies, and if you're going somewhere special, you can wear them as very attractive earrings. <laughs> <laughs> so you have jewelry and a clock. How good is that? You don't need height for this. No, the, the, the weights, that they're, you'll see them when you go around the corner, they only hang about this. But you can put them anyhow you want, it makes no difference. So we need a cuckoo bird, otherwise we don't have a cuckoo clock. This is how we make the sound. You have two pipes, at the very top of the pipe you'll see a little hole, uh, like on a flute, and the air will go in and out with the help of a bellows. Oh. So you have two of those with slightly different sounds. And then you put it together inside a cuckoo clock, add a little magic, and you have a cuckoo clock. <laughs> That's all it is. Very simple. So that would be a, a larger clock, and then as they get smaller, this would be our medium clock. So you notice the sound has changed a little bit? Yeah. Mm. Then in the smallest clocks, we have very limited space, so we put in our little baby cuckoo clock, or baby cuckoo clock. But as long as you keep feeding them, they will get bigger. <laughs> and then you get a huge clock. So we're going to go down to the very far wall here, ladies and gentlemen. I'll show you one or two more of the clocks we have, give you a little bit more information. 